Now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hey everybody, this is Alex and this is The Ramble and we go until midnight tonight, hopefully. Right here from New York, New York. Ladies and gentlemen, here he is, Larry Bubbles Brown. Hello. Hello, Larry. Alex. Hi, hi, Larry. How you doing? Good. Pal? <laughs> You uh, you doing all right? Yes, the uh, hurricane uh, went to Southern California and yeah. missed us. So you missed Hurricane Hillary. Hillary, or, yes. yes. Like, as they said, that was the only hurricane that wasn't going to blow. But. <laughs> oh boy! Hard hitting topical humor. Hard hitting topical <laughs> humor, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Weren't you going to get your eyes done or something? Yeah, and uh, so I've been rescheduled. Oh, so. Why are you rescheduling it? Oh, I had a dental thing the same week, and that's not good to do them together, I guess. So I... Well, only well, if, only only if you have problems with your eye teeth. <laughs> eye teeth. Where's that phrase coming from? Eye teeth. I, I don't know. There's some teeth they call eye teeth, and I don't know what they are. You know. There's all these phrases that people use every day that we really don't know what they mean. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But uh, but uh, um, uh, so you, so you canceled it again? Yes. Why? That's a. I gotta tell you, Larry. For whatever you're worried about, that is the easiest thing you, procedure you're going to have in in medicine. Okay. Yeah, I'm. I'll, I'll get it done. Don't worry. It's just uh, the dentist is more of a problem. You know, I, I've I've been putting off going to the dentist only because I know when they look in your mouth, they're looking for a yacht. You know. Exactly. And uh, I I don't buy that one at all. And so I don't want to go because I know she's going to say, you got to do this, you got to do that, you know. And, uh, you know, as long as they're not hurting, don't do it, you know. And uh, But I do have to go to her and get a cleaning. But I, I, brought... I know a couple of people that uh, haven't gone to the dentist for 20 years. Really? Yeah. Yeah, I didn't go for about five, six, wow. something like that. And then I got a toothache, so I had to go. You know, but uh, and I didn't brush my teeth much. I wasn't a big brusher. Now I brush at least once a day, if not twice. So, mm -hmm. so you know. But Don't I, forget you know to what floss. It, what, I floss. I'm doing all that. You have floss, and I, I brush my teeth. You know, um, at least once a day, sometimes twice a day. And I bet when I go to the dentist, you're going to say, "Boy, you got a lot of plaque there." You know, no matter what I do, whether I brush or I don't brush, boy, you got a lot of plaque there. Right. Well, you know, this is from the woman whose job it is to remove the plaque. And so if I've got a lot of plaque there, she may have to charge me more. <laughs> you know? So yeah, that's like going to the IRS to do your taxes. Yeah, I think the other thing they try to sell you, I think it's called a deep cleaning. Now, where they go into the gums, and that's like a thousand dollars. Well, I've done that. I've done that, and uh, um, um, oddly enough, it, it's pretty good. I mean, it really gets out all the all the tartar and everything. But yeah, I've done deep cleaning, Ew, but I didn't, I didn't think it cost more money than I, it cost a little more because they had to spend more time, you know, but. Um, yeah, whatever you know, I mean, all, all I know is when I go to the dentist, they're always looking for a yacht. You know, let's t let's do some X-rays, let's uh, let's uh, clean the teeth. Okay, how do they look? Oh, look at that! You've got a cavity. We're going to have to do this something about that. You know, I haven't had a cavity in years. I had one, I think, about a year ago. As I've gotten older, I think there are no more teeth left. To have a cavity in, you know? <laughs> they're either they're either um, uh, crowns or they're implants. 
you know, most of my teeth. You got so, implants? Wow. I've got three implants, is it? I think it's three, yeah. And those work good? You know, I'm, they're like real teeth, you know. You, you don't... Uh, they, they, it, it's a, you know it's a false tooth obviously I never refer to it as that I refer to it as an implant but I mean it's like your real teeth you don't you really don't notice them you know in fact I have to move my tongue around my mouth right now to figure out there's one uh, there's another uh, I think not there uh, next to it uh, two Where's the third one? I don't. I don't even remember where the. Oh, I know where the third one is. It's, it's next to the big one. There it is. Okay, I found it. All right. So I have three. Okay. Well, you know, so but, that's uh, about five thousand each. Yeah, about five thousand each. Um, but you know, it's better. I don't know. I'm just one of these kind of people. I don't want to be missing a tooth. It makes me feel like, I don't know. I vote. <laughs> it makes me feel like I voted for Trump. You know. <laughs> You can't be in entertainment with a missing tooth. Well, uh, you know, I mean, uh, our good friend Steve Kravitz had uh, bridge put in in the bottom, and all his teeth removed in the bottom. Ooh. Yeah. And he has a bridge, so he takes it out every day. I mean, you know, to me, I don't care what it costs. Uh, I'm, I'm, I would get a full implant in that bridge. You know, what they do. Well, Letterman is, had the gap. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but, uh, I'm surprised that he didn't get that taken care of, but it worked for him. No, it was part. Of, it was part of his character. I think if you look later on, I think maybe it got a little closer together or something. I don't know. But uh, no, he he was uh, the gap was his was his signature. And you're used to it, you know. You're used to it all your life. I'm um, I'm having a problem with my mouth lately. It's getting. Do I sound like I'm talking just fine? Yeah. Yeah. Well, I I just feel like my mouth, the lips are plumping up or something, and I it may you know you don't want to change. I've I've never had a I had I've had, I have some like crowded teeth in the bottom of my mouth, and I've never had anything done about them because I've always been worried if I did something about them it would change the way I talk. Because your dentalization, everything's based on your tongue hitting your teeth. Like when you talk, your tongue hits your teeth sometimes. And if, if let's say that I was suddenly missing teeth down there, I wouldn't be able to talk well. So I, I'm very careful about that, you know, about any change in the structure of my mouth because I'm used to talking with it. But lately, my, I feel like my mouth is getting puffy, and I, I, I can't. Does that sound weird? My mouth getting puffy. Could be a slight allergic reaction to something. Well, yeah, but this is constant now, you know. So, who knows? Maybe one of the medications I'm taking that's possible too. So. Yeah. You know. So, and it, that's the other thing. As you get older, they love giving you drugs. You know, here you can solve this problem by taking this. Oh, I think the average person over 65 takes 12 or 13 pills a day. Oh, I only take six. I take one for blood pressure. I take one for, I take, I take a um, boner pill, but I take uh, the boner pill that sh it keeps your prostate shrunk or something. So that's for my prostate, not for a boner. For, for, okay. If, if it's for a boner, I want my money back. Anyway, um, uh, and let me see here. I got, you know, I got the, uh, I don't know. I got, I got six pills I'm taking. And I would love to, I would love to just say to the doctor, you know something, I'm going to stop taking all of these and see how, how much better I feel. You might feel better. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, they go, well, you know, the recording stopped for some reason. I have no uh -oh. idea. But anyway, we're back here. So we just picked up where we left off. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, uh, what was I going to say? Oh, so I'm talking about doctors, and they just, one pill after another. You know, when I was younger, I didn't have any um, many pills. But then again, I didn't go to many doctors. All right. 
But you see a doctor like once a year, and again, he's looking for a yacht like the dentist. You know, so he's checking everything. Oh, you know, and then at my age, 53, and because I had uh, prostate cancer, they're all worried about any change in my biology. You know, and they send me to this doctor and that doctor, this oncologist, that oncologist, you know. I just had a minor case of, of prostate cancer that hadn't manifested itself outside of the prostate. Very common. Very common. And now it's like I look at my, my, my uh, doctor's report on uh, my, what do you call it, uh, my, the doctor's report on my, uh, um, on my visit to him, and it says uh, he has prostate cancer. Well, and that's pushing it, you know. But that's the way they look at it. Like, oh, you have prostate cancer, so you, know, could, you could go anywhere else. You know, could have gone any. And I'm going, no, you know. It was confined to the prostate, and they just so blew it out with radiation that there's no probably no chance, knock on wood, that it will come back. But they treat me like a cancer patient. Oh, we gotta check this. We gotta check that. I, you know, I, I always like to talk about the blood test that I got that panicked my neurologist, and he sent me to this blood doctor. This it's called the Cancer and Blood Specialist. I think it's a bad name for an organization. I don't think you put cancer in front of the name, you know. But uh, and I went to them and I got ripped off for five thousand dollars. Or wow! The, well, the government got a bill for five thousand dollars, and they said, "Fuck you! Here's twelve hundred." You know. And it's still a rip off. Yeah, I mean, and and then I never heard the results. But anyway, it, it, this is what they do when you've had cancer. You know, they suddenly are worried about everything that doesn't look right, you know, and because their specialty isn't that specialty, they always send you to somebody else. And then that guy goes, oh, that was nothing. <laughs> you know, so I mean, it's just, just ridiculous. Uh, and if people, if you call this, listen to this program, you see we talk a lot about medicine, it's because we're old farts, okay? Yeah. And, and we go to doctors. Um, Marjorie has, life is pain. Well, Marjorie loves her doctors. She just, uh, she. There are times in the year where every night, day she isn't here when I wake up. Where were you? I was the doctor getting a checkup. You know, she's got the this doctor. She's got the that doctor. She's got the spine doctor. She's got the uh, spin doctor. Um, she's got all these different doctors. And it, it's like a social occasion for her. It's the only thing she does with her life is go to the doctor. It's amazing. It's amazing. So. And they all get, well, the dentist, like you said, searching for the yacht, that seems like they make a lot of money, but that seems to me like a horrible job. What? Being a dentist. Being a dentist, I think I think the suicide rate among dentists is the highest of the medical professions. That's what I've always heard, yeah, and I could understand why you're First of all, you're standing all day, and then you're in someone's mouth. It just uh, doesn't seem pleasant. Well, you, you know, you uh, that is a terrible thing to have to do. But the reason why I think they blow their brains out, you see, it's <laughs> it's not de dentistry is not like other medicine. Uh, I describe it as carpentry. You know. I mean, pretty it, much. It, it, it doesn't seem like it, they don't get respect from other doctors. They don't. I think they do, don't they? I don't think other doctors consider them to be a real doctor, but oh, it's I, ridiculous. I, I, I'll, I'll tell you something. As opposed to other doctors, and I have to say this, okay, a, a really good dentist uh, is an artisan. Because, oh, they are, yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, they have to, like, create teeth, and they have to... Uh, you know, they, they have to be a, an artisan. They're like a carpenter. Uh, whereas the other professions are analytical. D doctor, you go to the doctor. He goes, oh, yeah, this, this, we took a blood test. Your blood test, your blood is up on this. It's down on that. Here's a pill. You know, uh, I, th I think you would respect as, as an artisan dentist more than just general doctors. You know what I'm saying? 
Because well, they don't. They don't even offer. There's no good dental insurance like health insurance. Really, we, you know, it seems like a separate. It seems like it's separate from the uh, medical world. Well, we have uh, a health insurance, a dental insurance through Marjorie's uh, a doctor, her, her, uh, her, through her business rather, and uh, I think we get two thousand dollars a year or something. But you know, it, it's not a lot of money. I mean, you you get yourself. Uh, you get That's yourself a, that'll a, cover a crown. You get an implant. It's it, they don't even cover implants. Okay, so you know, medic, uh, dental insurance isn't really that good. You know, um, I mean, I would like an, a dental insurance where I pay money and they take care of everything that's wrong. Yeah, know? but most procedures. Are, well, I, you know, procedures medically are, are are huge. I mean, my cancer um, treatment came out to treatments came out to about a hundred and ten thousand dollars something like that Jesus. yeah yeah I mean that isn't what the government paid but that's what they charge and uh, I got that that was pretty good and uh, that took, my insurance took care of all of that so yeah so do I sound like I'm talking all right you're fine, yeah. yeah. I just feel like my mouth is is full of cotton. Uh, I'm it it it's weird. It's weird. So how have you been doing otherwise? Let's get away from medicine. Okay. <laughs> get away from. Because every time you get you get any two people over the age of sixty five and they go out to dinner, and somewhere in that conversation, medicine is going to come up. You know, either well, I, yeah, either a malady they have, or or one of their friends. I died. went to <laughs> the I went to the doctor, and now I feel like crap. You know, and, and he told me that I have the I have the craps. You know, and whatever. So I mean, I, I just uh, it's just anytime you get a bunch of old people together talking, they're gonna somewhere in the conversation, the medicine's gonna come. We can't all be Jack LaLanne. So. Well, yeah, I'm sure Jack LaLanne had medical problems. That he never talked about, but, you know. <laughs> Jack LaLanne. I mean, if exercising, look, if exercising was uh, the key to a long life, then Jim Fix would still be alive. Yes, and the, uh, you know, the guy that invented the power bar died while jogging. <laughs> Really? A few years ago, yeah. I was over in, uh, I think it was in Berkeley. Didn't Jim Fix drop dead from running? He dropped dead. He had a Jim long Fix, history, family people... history of a heart attack. Yeah, he, he... I think he was 43, something like that. Uh, he, he died he, while he, jogging, yeah. People don't remember probably, I mean, a lot of people out there going, Jim Jim who? Jim Fix. And he, he had this uh, whole books and tapes and audio discs and stuff on Jim Fix on running. And he said, if you run every day of your life, you'll have a long life. And he dropped dead. Yeah. The best one that I ever was somewhat involved in, I knew this guy named Marshall Efron. He was an actor. And he had always wanted to go on the Dick Cavett show, you know. And finally, one day, they said, come on, be on our show. All right? So he goes on the show, and then he sits down, and he talks to Dick Cavett. And... He said, the set I did with with uh, uh, Cabot was brilliant. He said, it really established who I was, you know, to an audience who might not know who I am. And it was like a real breakthrough for me. He says, and then I move over to the seat next to the big seat. And he introduces the next guest, which was got by a guy named Rodale, who had Prevention Magazine, I think it was called. And he was, that was a medical magazine. That was a magazine about, you know, good, he about health. Mm -hmm. okay? <laughs> and uh, Rodale is talking about how the fact is that you can live to be 100 if you just eat right and you exercise right and you do this and you do that. And then Cavett is talking, and all of a sudden, Rodale gives out with this gurgle that's known as the death rattle. And it's like, 
He died right there in the chair on the Dick Cavett show. I've heard about this story. It's amazing. Yeah, he died. Meanwhile, Marshall Efron, who's just on the set of his life, not it wasn't a set. It was, you know, him talking to Dick Cavett and so on. It worked just well. Who we just had killer set with, with Dick Cavett is sitting next to him watching this guy drop dead. So now they stop tape call for an ambulance you know the usual is there a doctor in the house but for an ambulance and the ambulance comes hauls him away okay and the show never aired and they never <laughs> and they never asked Marshall back because they considered him bad, bad luck, luck. <laughs> <laughs> so you know that was a famous uh, time and, and they never ran the show you know so Needless to a, say. Yeah, the time means everything. There was a comic, I forget who it was, he went on Letterman his first time, and it was the day the space shuttle blew up, and everybody was so depressed. <laughs> yeah, you don't, you don't want that to happen to you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, uh, it, it, so, uh, you know, I mean, um, these guys who for years preach great health, outside of Jack Lane, sometimes don't live that long, you know? That's true, yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, uh, you, well, you exercise, you you run... Uh, I do, what? and I'll probably be dead soon. So. Well, you run three days a week, right? Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, I don't run. I can barely walk, okay? But I don't run. Um, I remember you used to, for a while, when I first met you, you were actually on a bicycle. Yeah, I had a bike, really good bike, really w wonderful bike, and I, I used to uh, take it out. I parked it in the garage, and then I we lived near the uh, uh, near the uh, Presidio, and I would take my bike and I would run along the side of the uh, water, all the way up to Fort Point, and then back again. That was about maybe two and a half, three miles, mm -hmm. and I would do that. Try to do that every day. And it was wonderful. I enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it. And then one day my bike got stolen. So I had to replace the bike, and I replaced it. But that new bike didn't feel like the old bike, you know? I, I don't know if you've ever... Do you have bikes at all? Do you, have, you ever did that? No, no, no. You change bikes, and sometimes the new bike you've got just doesn't... It it doesn't feel right. Either it climbs up your ass or something on the seat or... You know, and I never took that one out anymore. So that was the end of my biking years uh, when somebody stole my bike. So that was the most that this guy ever exercised, ladies and gentlemen. And you've outlived many people. Well, I mean, I don't, I don't run. Um, uh, you know, Marjorie ran, and she got, and, and she did all exercise. She was just very athletic, very, very almost obsessively athletic and she's got the world's worst back you know and I said you know all that work didn't it didn't help you know and I think that running maybe after a while is bad for you you know uh, a good case could be made for that I think it uh, pounds the spine and uh, that could cause a back well problem. they say don't run on asphalt or, or pavement because if you do that the impact is harder okay yeah. so you don't do that uh, just uh, uh, try to go on on you know ground earth that you do a lot better but you don't right I try to stay on grass or dirt yeah. oh really oh you do okay well it's you know it's pretty good for you but as I say Marjorie's got these back problems and I'm going boy that 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 working out really helped didn't it you know <laughs> Meanwhile, I didn't do anything, and of course, I'm, I made it to 83. Do I feel healthy? No. Nobody feels healthy at 83, okay? Uh, but, uh, uh, you know, I mean, I made it this far. Yeah, well, I think I told you before that uh, Neil Armstrong, first man on the moon, did not exercise because he believed we had a finite number of heartbeats, and he didn't want to waste. <laughs> really? Yeah. I, I don't think that's true, 
but um, uh, I, I told somebody that I think I think it was Richard Simmons I said this to because I said a couple of things that made him cringe and it was I have a theory that if you don't use your body it won't wear out <laughs> and he kind of looked at me like are you are you out of your mind you know but then again he was out of his mind so what the hell hey listen he was, what? yeah he yeah. yes he was he very he was very wealthy for a while wasn't he, he <laughs> yeah for a while i don't know he probably still is still is yeah, yeah. anyway hey listen we've uh, run out of time here but well yeah. let's do this again uh, next week we will okay ladies okay. and gentlemen larry bubbles brown now in its ninth year, this is GabNet, the great American broadcast network. Talk like you've never heard it before. Hi there, everybody. How are you? Uh, I'm not feeling that well tonight. Uh, I, I, uh, it's just it's, it's, this pain in my leg has just been just driving me nuts, you know. And it's uh, actually made me have a slight, just a very slight temperature, like 98. Uh, 98.7 you know so I'm not feeling that well tonight so I got an idea here hold on a second let me see here first let me uh, let me grab uh, uh, some people here for the uh, for the uh, thing for the uh, for the thing see that's how well off I am tonight before the uh, uh, for our um, show and there is josh wheeler hello josh hello how you doing well i'm not feeling that well tonight so i had an idea how would you like to host the show for the next hour well if you need me to i'm sure i could yeah you do you've done a good job of it in the past you know and i just you know i'm, I'm just not feeling a hundred percent here and uh, uh if if you would do it uh i first of all i will oops that always happens. Uh, I will uh, make you a uh, uh, what do you a co-host so that you can let people in, and then I will just uh, disappear here and uh, uh, get out of here and let you uh, let you handle the show, okay? And I just, no problem. And I just hope that people will call you. All right. <laughs> we yeah. hope so. Well, we hope so. Okay, so ladies and gentlemen, it's uh, it's uh, uh, him. There he goes. He's uh, going to host the show to, now. So let's see if I can turn myself off here. There we, we got go. The co-hosting ability, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You, you're okay, able to I think that's set it. up. Mm -hmm. Well, if we're set, we'll take off for you. I'll fill in the night for AB since he's feeling a little bit down. Not a problem. Anytime. How's Brian Neary? Doing good. How about you? Well, I'm doing pretty well. A lot of action for you to talk about. What's that? A lot of action for you to talk about. Well, we can get to it if you want. You're <laughs> right. Yeah, it has been a busy week. While we wait for some, uh, while we wait for some folks to call in, we can get started on that if you'd like. Yeah, it's uh, it's been a lot going on. It's a busy day for me. It's uh. It's very hot here, very warm. I don't know. I don't think that in California where you live, you deal as much with the high humidity the way the Midwest does. Yeah. Um, Not at all. The, the first time I felt humidity was uh, in, I graduated in high school. A bunch of us went to Mexico. And it was like, what the hell is this? It's sunny, and then you know, feel like you hadn't taken a shower in a week, right? When you go yeah, outside, yeah, yeah, it's rough. It's <laughs> uh, incredibly high humidity day. It's uh, actually so it's basically the hottest day of the year today, mm. and uh, the worst humidity I remember in a long time. And I uh, came home, and it hadn't happened for very long, but you know, my air conditioner wasn't working, so. Oh. Oh. It's like okay, so I had to jump on that, but I got it fixed. I'm fairly uh, capable when it comes to stuff like that, so I had to run somewhere and uh, get a part from someone I knew who owns their own business doing that. Luckily, mm -hmm. or I'd have maybe been stuck. 
replaced it got her going looking good now so uh got that wrapped up I'm sitting around now ready to go talk about anything else that might have happened this week other than weather because uh that gets a little worn out but um <laughs> Yeah, I feel I feel bad because when I'm driving home from Lodi, I see people. His, you know, it's been over 100 up there, oh, and man. coming home, you know, this last couple of weeks, and you feel bad when you see people with the windows rolled down because you know they don't have no no AC in their car. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, like, probably. You never know. I mean, some people don't mind. You know, I don't mind it like on my drive home and you know stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, um, I can really take whatever, but uh, I don't care for the humidity, and I like cooler weather personally. Um, you know, I certainly don't mm -hmm. like blizzards and, you know, things like that. Uh, but, you know, look, when it gets in the 30s here and stays that way, I'm, I am I actually kind of like that. Now, people in California might think that's, you know, blasphemy or whatever. But, uh, but you know. No, that, that, that's one of those cold days when everyone starts, you know, posting pictures of their temperature in their car. <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, I skipped that, I guess. But, yeah. So, yeah, I'll fill in for GabNet. We'll get going on some politics here, I guess. If you're listening and you want to call, call us up. If you've never called before, call us up. It'll be the perfect perfect night. Uh, I've got plenty of room. We should have plenty to talk about. Um, you know, obviously, the two big stories of the week today is Friday was Wednesday and Thursday. So, obviously, Wednesday, you had a clown show, otherwise known as a Republican National Committee presidential debate, whatever the official name was. That was interesting. I did not stay up and watch it because I would never lose sleep to uh, suffer through that. Uh, but I have heard a good bit about it, looked into it. And, uh, and then, of course, Thursday, uh, former President Trump made his grand entrance in uh, Fulton County Jail and then his grand exit. Um, you know what? I don't haven't heard much about though. So I ask you about this. Have you, I, you know, I don't, I didn't even hear any clips or sound bites that I remember from his interview with Carlson that aired on Twitter or whatever you want to call it. Uh, did you see any of that? Are they not putting that out or did it not go or, you know, cause I, I thought for sure that the next day that I, you would hear a lot about it because, you know, anytime he speaks, um, you know, he says something ridiculous yeah. anytime he speaks in, you know, a long format like that, he says many things that are ridiculous. So I thought for sure he would act like an idiot. Mm -hmm. um, for quite some time and you know they would play a lot of it like they normally do you know I don't I don't know that I heard really anything about that so I don't know if it did I didn't hear anything like did it get canceled or anything I didn't hear anything positive negative or otherwise really yeah the the only thing that I heard was well I was listening to CNN satellite just so basically the show you know or the the network when I was coming home from Lodi and um it was, you know, they're showing, they're talking about every turn, you know, he's turning down Jefferson and he's turning down here and, you know, there's 18 motorcycles and all this stuff. When he left, it was pretty funny because they said uh, when he's, he's going to the Trump airplane now and he's going to speak, he's going to say something. If there's anything newsworthy, we'll, we'll, we'll cover it. <laughs> so CNN yeah. basically saying we're not giving them any airtime because we don't know what stupid idiotic well, things that to say about it yeah i so i don't know if that's what happened with the the twitter thing or or whatever and i, yeah. I you know, what i refuse to call it x or whatever i'm just gonna call it twitter because it's easier oh yeah um, but uh if they don't like it they can you know send me a note or something but you know uh, so i really didn't hear much about that and I, so i don't know i'm sure tucker carlson didn't ask him anything that was not scripted and you know it wasn't live i guess it was taped and all that so i'm sure it was a real nice production sorry i missed it uh but you know but the you know that that happened and you know i didn't hear much about it so i don't really know what developed i mean if someone else watched it or heard about it and wants to call up and let us know and talk about it heck i'm glad to hear that go right ahead um you know, and, and I'm not going to go back and, like, try to find it and all that. I deleted Twitter months ago. Um, you know, I really don't like Elon Musk at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, just as a personal 
preference. I mean, if people do, I have whatever. I, I'm not going to argue with them about it. But look, I don't. Um, uh, you know, uh, if he's accomplished things, fine. I'm not saying things haven't been accomplished. I'm just right. saying I don't like him. Right. So, you know, which I'm allowed to do. Uh, so I basically just said I don't need this. I deleted that. Mm -hmm. Don't use much social media at all. Uh, been fine without it. Haven't died or anything. So the one the one thing so, I saw. Was Trump Trump put that he put something on there and I didn't I don't have Twitter never had it, but Twitter well it's hard but, to miss it I know what you're saying you know yeah yeah they said something like never surrender he said he said like one picture so I'm like never surrender yeah and then right somebody posted on there saying for a guy who's had to surrender four times and he keeps saying never surrender <laughs> yeah I mean I did hear that which you know look I get that that's the way it works but for someone <laughs> like uh, people probably don't know all that much about me but patrick were here kevin or or what you know some people who know me better um so i have it like this huge uh i'm a big winston churchill guy i guess is the way to say it and to steal those words I'm from yeah. winston churchill not that they were yeah. his words exclusively other people say that but churchill really made a big deal about the never surrender thing um you know, and just was really known for it and rallied a nation around it, you know, in its worst times. And uh, so I just have to roll my eyes. Look, yeah. he's allowed to say it. You know, there's right. nothing wrong, but I, I roll my eyes at it. I and mean, make America great again. You know, yeah. I mean, he steals all these. Well, that was stolen. Yeah, that that was oh. in, the, you know, they use that in the 20s. And in but, the but, but, but if you ask, if you ask Trumpers, they, they think that he came up with that. No, That's like the whole you know, problem. I don't know? think he's come up with anything. No, <laughs> really, ever in his entire. I mean, you know, seriously. Uh, and didn't, didn't Melania, didn't they, they, they find that she was, didn't she have some speech or something? And they found out that she stole most of that or whoever wrote it for her copied something, I think, a while back. Well, I seem to remember something about that really early on yeah. in his administration. And then they she really stopped speaking. Yeah. Yeah. After that. So, yeah, I, I do remember something about that, though. But uh, um, and hopefully the air conditioner that was running wasn't making too much background noise or anything. It just shut off after a while. It's been I can't hear catching it. up. So it's been running more than it normally would, uh, catching up from the repair. But yeah, you know, stealing that from from Churchill, yeah, I don't care for it, obviously. But look, you know, whatever, just it's a phrase. Um, but you know, I didn't see much of that. I'm not. I'm certainly not going to go look for it. I'm not going to, you know, <laughs> I'm not going to go sit and watch an hour of that if I don't have to. If I had. Mm -hmm. A job, you know, where I were forced to talk about it, you know, like if I were employed full time by Gabnet and my salary was, you know, a dollar or something like that, I would think about it. But it would be hard to stomach otherwise, uh, you know, because who would voluntarily seek out uh, listening to Trump for an hour, you know? Yeah, it's the same same thing, right? You, you know, you know, you know the topics he's going to hit, and you know what he's going to say about it. It's it's just over and over. Yeah. Again. Even as oh, yeah, You're, yeah, right. He certainly does not change his tune. Mm -hmm. Um, you know for sure. So, you know that was what Wednesday, Wednesday, right? He did that same time as the debate, right? If I remember correct. So, you know. The other thing that night, of course, then getting to that was the debate. Uh, I don't know if you watched it. Um, I didn't watch it in entirety. I have seen a good deal about it. I have heard a couple days of news coverage about it. Um, you know, look, I, I, I'm going to try to analyze it, you know, from a fair perspective, because part of what, you know, I would do here is analyze things just like a historian would or like a journalist should or anything like that, where I try to set aside, you know, really kind of what I feel personally or whatever, and, and at least try to look at the events. But look, you know, I, I just don't understand that group and that party who cannot even get together on the Trump deal. I mean, they're just, they're so chicken shit that it is just it's unbelievable and, and you know for even for some of the folks who would want to call up here and argue or claim well you know 
you know, they, they've got some good options there. You know, Nikki Haley or, or Mike Pence, you know, more, you know, old school conservatism and whatnot. I get that, but look, they're still on, they're still not on team normal. I mean, when you get to the question that, you know, really is open and says, if Trump goes to a trial, if he is found guilty, if he is convicted, if he is a convicted felon and still wins the nomination for this party, will you support him? And those same people say, oh, yeah, yeah, I'll support him. I'll vote for him. I mean, come on. I mean, if you don't like Joe Biden, fine. I get it. This is America. You're allowed not to like the president. Perfectly fine. But are you really going to tell me that what Joe Biden is doing right now is so bad and just the, the country is just so terrible that you, you're you seriously saying you would like to vote for a person who has been convicted of stealing nuclear secrets mm-hmm. you know, <laughs> to a person who has been convicted of, and I'm speaking in the hypothetical because that was what the question was, mm-hmm. to a person who's been convicted of trying to overturn and steal the a presidential federal election that they law i mean really yeah. i mean you would rather have that than joe biden what because yeah. what he's doing is just so bad i mean what is yeah. the has the economy crashed are we involved in a war somewhere that i'm not aware of uh you know uh is is gas five dollars a gallon is is the cost of uh living out of this world no, all those things are coming down. All those things are under control. The economy is strong. Um, I'm not going to you know. I just think that the people who are voting for Trump, he like you know, like I mentioned before, like he says he could shoot somebody in Times Square, and, and he knows that. And he, th- these people are just like they're diehard Trumpers, and no matter what happens, they're going to still have their shirt, red, white, and blue flag shirt. You know, and, and on TV saying, you know, this is a witch hunt and all this stuff. And those Trump people, there's nothing going to sway their vote. I, I don't think anything would sway their vote. Well, I agree. And, you know, it's funny because I've seen and heard about some polling afterwards that is saying, oh, you know, 55 percent of the party or whatever the number was, 56, 54, say they're ready to move on from Trump and. And all this. And look, maybe it's true. I don't know. But I'm just saying, but I haven't seen any of that with my own eyes. Okay. And I live in a Trump territory. Right. So the county that I live in, I'm pretty sure was the top county in the United States for, uh, uh, got some people calling up here. Let's get them on. And Josh, are you are you seeing Trump flags and the whole by F Biden and all that stuff? Yeah, so that's what I was getting at. You know, like you know, what I saw was the county that I'm living in. Like I said, was the top county for Trump in the U.S. Now I'm pretty sure that his margin of victory in this county was like eighty-eight to twelve percent. You know, I mean, like literally, like eight and a half to nine out of 10 people in the county that I live in voted for him. So look, it's possible that I don't have a good perspective. Maybe where I live, it's so tainted or whatever, but I'm just saying that even among those folks, I I don't have any sense that anything's changing. No one has taken their flags down. No one has taken the signs out of the window um, you absolutely cannot go to the grocery store, buy fuel, uh, stop at the hardware, anything without someone walking around with, uh, their hat on or, you know, you know, whatever. I mean, you just, you just can't do it. So, uh, you know, I'm not seeing it. I mean, I, I don't know, you know, <laughs> What you guys are seeing where you live, but I, I I hear about this polling that says, you know, 55, 60% or whatever say they're ready to move on from Trump or whatever. But are, I mean, I don't know. Where do these, do they all live in the same areas? And I'm just not in one of them. 
or not, you know, and I don't have all that deep dive data or whatever from that poll, but I don't know. I mean, I talked to Kevin before and he acts like where he lives, he's not driving around seeing Nikki Haley for president signs or, yeah. or, or no, it's just, it's just a Trump, the Trump people are loud mouths. You know, yeah. those, those particular I mean. people are just loud mouth. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think I can keep it. Kevin's area. All of a sudden he'll see, they have some overpasses and all of a sudden they'll have, you know, one night, Friday night where there's traffic, they'll have the Trump flags and they're yelling and screaming with their flags. When we I go to Lodi, down yeah, when I go to Lodi, I'll see a big truck every yep. once in a while with this big, huge flag, Trump and, yep. you know, Central F Valley's heavy with it. Yeah. Yeah. F Biden. Um, but like in San Jose, it's, it's, pretty quiet over here you know silicon valley is pretty quiet yeah yeah so i mean we had a couple other people join kevin is here now we have three other people i'm not sure you know um i think john maybe john renshaw okay look like you know some Hello. Uh, they're currently oh the other could maybe not is that gabriel hello. can you hear us yes hello my name is gabriel how are you all um good uh -huh. thank you Yes, I am. Uh, I'm thoroughly enjoying the conversation. You know, it's a good thing to listen to. Um, I would like to, uh, you know, put my opinion in on this. And uh, I think our political opinions might differ ever so slightly, but it might not change, you know, the fact that we might be able to have a conversation together about an intelligent subject, you know, like the humans we are. Oh, 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 oh. He's not an He's not Somebody get this nigga out of here. No, no, please calm down. It, it is okay. I'm not here to, to spread hate. Or... Not really sure. Oh, da, 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 da. There's another oh, one. Wiener, suck it, suck it, suck There's it, another one to dump. Wiener. I have itchy oh, wiener in my friend. It feels like a very disgusting yeah, we'll get rid of that. It glows. Yeah, it glows. Yeah, I have pubic hair that looks like a sea urchin, my friend. Sounds like it he's like gonna go. <laughs> Why did you remove that guy? He was but, black. Uh, anyway, you racist. Well, was say, you racist was, man. Uh, you racist white man. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we'll get back to that. I took a chance on those people, so we'll stick with what we've got. But yeah. uh, we well, do have an opinion, though, and we heard it. And yeah, that's fine. yeah, that, yeah. Was, that was nice. Probably, stuff I probably should have warned you about that. Well, I thought about it as soon as they called. <laughs> if they don't, look, for, to, if they don't look familiar, have some question yeah. as to who they are. Yeah, I did, and I, you know, took a. I figured as soon as I let it, I hit let everyone in and then i was like ah that's probably not a good idea and i was hovering right over their names waiting for them and they forever they didn't yeah yeah and no camera and i just kept waiting so yeah, I got the john wasn't john renshaw he just he just put on there it wasn't him uh and but, yeah. luckily they didn't have anything on the screen that was pornographic yeah, yeah alex is it was something about auschwitz or something yeah there was yeah, well, some uh Adolf yeah, showed up. Adolf showed up. He made a show. He made a show. Now, there was some German Ku Klux Klan going on there. there was, uh, yeah, but if you don't recognize their name, I'd say stay away from them tonight. Yep. Lesson learned there, no okay. doubt. See you later. Yeah, no problem. <laughs> right, yeah, what, what's going on, Alex? How are you feeling? Oh, I'm just feeling puny. You know, I just didn't, didn't feel well tonight, and I didn't know if I could go for an hour and be. All right. All right, yeah, I won't bother. Right. Running a slight temperature. I just got on a little bit late, so I didn't know what's going on. Yeah, yeah. Get yeah, some rest. Well, have fun. Have fun. Yep. You know, uh, our guy is terrific. Okay. Go get some rest. I yeah. will try. <laughs> I'll be back towards the end of the hour. So. All right. But I thought I'd jump in there and just. Yeah, just I got rid of you about such things. Uh, anyway. No doubt. Got them off there pretty quick, though. We didn't yeah. see nothing nasty. That was good. Yeah, right. It, it, it's, always, it's always been weird, though. You know, the Biden, I don't know if it's just the Democrats are so quiet or what, but, you know, you never see people like, you know, like like we see the obnoxious Trumpers, you know, where you don't see those kind of people like overtaking, you know, the overpass and, you know, Biden, Biden, Biden. And all that yeah, stuff. I mean, I don't I don't see any, you know, fuck Trump flags here or, you know, but hmm. Well, really? that, I guess is obviously I wouldn't hear, but I don't even see them when I travel to like Columbus, for example. Um, Nothing you know, in the like in the front yard. You don't see Trump signs or anything. Oh no, that's what I'm saying. I see all the Trump stuff. But I don't ones. see that. I don't see those opposite signs. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. You know I'm saying. I mean, Come I can probably, it. and I'm not. I'm not kidding you. I could probably go to the grocery store back tomorrow and see three flags that say "fuck Biden." Yeah, with yeah. the profanity on it. No, I mean, yeah, yeah. I mean, no, I'm no, serious. No. Like that's the flag they have hanging up at their house. 
But yeah. I'll never see one that says, you know, the opposite. Right. Uh, and, and, you know, I'm not saying that makes Democrats better or anything. I'm just saying it's just different. Yeah. And I don't even see those, like I said, when I go to some Democratic stronghold areas like Columbus, right, which is a, a big city. Um, it is not an agricultural, you know, out of the way area like where I live, you know, big city, diverse population, um, you know, race, ethnicity, you know, the whole thing. I don't even see him there. So, but I, I don't, like I said, they keep acting like there's these breaks in his, in the glass that he's standing on, you know, but I, I don't know. I just don't see it. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know there's polling there that says that there is, but I don't see it personally, you know, and I don't know that I believe it and I don't know that I trust it. Um, but maybe there is. But even if there is, you know, from everything that I've seen from that debate, and again, I I don't really, not much of this really to me is politics. Like, I'm obviously going to disagree with a lot of their policy ideas. Uh But that's interesting because I just, uh, you know how last week we did the uh, look up, um, fuck biden and all that stuff flags but there's quite a few of the ones that say the same thing about trump on amazon (laughs) really wow i I don't know who brandon is but fuck trump (laughs) trump for prison arrest trump fuck trump yeah there's a whole bunch of them you know maybe i'll get one you know for back yeah maybe we'll get a couple of those and start yeah we'll probably get bombed though you know can act like thing. jackasses too you know because that Lock him up. people's minds you know but it just it, there isn't many of them and they uh yeah, it right. blends right into the uh fuck biden stuff yeah so you know i don't there isn't very many of them so much of my stuff with you know like the wednesday night debate or whatever isn't nearly as much about policy as it is just the fact that they cannot get their party in a position to govern i mean they spent half their debate talking about trump yeah i mean i'm just i'm just i mean you know i mean they went a long time with you know conversation about what to do there and and who should be replacing him and why they should and all i mean you know he didn't even show up and they found a way to make it about him you know and about what they would do if he were the nominee, you know, and I, I just, that's what I'm saying is I don't know how, you know, and our friend Patrick is a perfect example here of someone that I'm sure that Patrick, you know, and I won't go too long on this cause he's not here, but I'm sure that he is probably in pretty decent agreement or probably be okay with being like a Nikki Haley supporter, for example, right? Like I can see him aligning with her on a lot of stuff, but even if that were the case, I I just don't see how he could take that step and say, yeah, you know, I'll vote for her in any case after she says, no, I'll support Trump. Like to me, they get to that point and I just say, if that's the case, then I have to break ties with you, no matter how much stuff we agree on. And I hate to be like a one issue person, but there are certain issues. And I think trying to overthrow the government for me is one of them. Okay. Where I've got to say, look, I I don't care. We pretty much agree on everything politically, but you got to that point and I can't, I can't, I can't do that. I can't, I can't do it. We're just, you put your hand up and said, if he were convicted and were the nominee, you would still vote for him over Joe Biden. Or anybody. Well, that, that, that was one of their. I can't do that. That was one of the questions they had to answer, right? To be able to go on that 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 panel was if whoever whoever wins the nomination, you will fully support them. So when they asked that question, they start a couple people start raising their hands, and then then slowly, you know, most of them raise them, except for what's that, name. But... I don't. I don't. I don't see how they can do that. I mean, that's what I'm saying is I don't get how anyone can tell me. I have to, I should respect them or anything like that. Mm. When to me, they don't, they don't deserve it. Mm. I mean, if they, they have some policy 
you know, that I don't agree with and, and stuff, you know, but I, see, I could live with all that, you know, I mean, mm -hmm. I don't agree with this person, but they got like the president, everything's okay, you know, it's fine, we'll work through that, but I don't see how I can be asked to have any sort of respect for someone who was willing to put someone in office that has broken laws related to the office. I right. mean, it's not as if he was a convicted felon on uh, drug counts or something, you know, like I seriously could overlook that. I mean, you know, but the, the, the crimes that he was charged with are violations of the office walking away with nuclear secrets, not giving them back and then showing them to people. Yeah. Trying to steal the election while accusing other people of stealing the election. I mean, uh, that's like, it, I can't even approach that bridge because it's a bridge way too far. I mean, it, it's just not, it's not going to happen. And I don't see how they can go on Wednesday and act that way and then expect anyone to respect them. I mean, Republicans are in that party and they will never give that up. But I just, I would like a Republican or a or a, a Trump supporter or anyone to sort of call up and tell me, you know, like, why are you willing to have someone who's been convicted of crimes in the office of the presidency over Joe Biden or anyone else? I mean, yeah, I don't get it. Yeah. You know, is there not another way to get what you want? With someone who has some integrity, and yeah, I think, it, I think it, well, go ahead. I think in their mind that that you know they they get brainwashed by him by saying you know it's a witch hunt, but you know then they're saying that well that's our guy, that's the guy who's the best. He's the best candidate. He's the best president ever, and they're trying to tear tear him down. So I'm still going to vote because I don't believe that he, even if he gets convicted, they don't understand the the process of getting convicted and getting arrested and all that stuff. And they they don't they don't want to believe it, and they just say it, the the you know, the whole judicial system is rigged and they're just doing this to get Trump out of the way. But he's the best president ever. Mm -hmm. it, right, and that's where I circle back to saying, "Are you kidding me? They know that's not true. <laughs> and they, they know." It. Yeah, and, and there they are, and yeah. that's why I say I don't see how anyone can harbor respect for that or support that. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know how Patrick feels about all that. We know a little bit about it, you know, because we talked to him. But I mean, I just I can't support that. I'm sorry, and it, like I say, it has little to do with their pol. We haven't talked about their politics or their policy yet, right? Right. I mean, I'm just talking about their integrity as a person who is seeking elected office and is standing there telling you that they're willing to vote for someone who ha has been convicted of crimes during their time in that elected office relating to the, that. I mean, I don't get that. Yeah. yeah. You know, like, well, if I can't be the president, then I'd rather have Trump than Biden. Re really? I mean, you'd rather have a convicted criminal. It's like, so, like so be, tell me what is so wrong right now that that's the case. It's like if you robbed banks and then you're trying to get a job at a bank. Yeah, you know, right. they, you, you don't you don't believe in the whole system. You don't honor it, and then here you are trying to work for it still. You know? Yeah, and I'm not I'm not here to like tell you that Biden is, you know, the top dog, the great. I mean, what I, I'm just saying. We're not in a ruinous state right now. I mean, we're not in a state to me that is so bad where I sit down and say, oh, God, we've got to get a we've got to get a felon in there because they'll be better than Biden. I mean, come on. That is that's nonsense. You know, so uh, I mean, you know, that's what happened, you know, with the debate. Uh, and, you know, that's why I, I can't watch that stuff because I just can't listen to people who have that like they this have is, that this, way of thinking and i don't care about the rest because i can't do it right well that's what's scary about uh christy yeah. is you know he 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 gets up there and talks smack about <clears throat> about trump and everything but he still has a lot of that that stuff behind him and that's why i think he's a little bit 
he's he's still scary. I mean, he 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 has the uh, he has the right idea going, you know, breaking away from it, but he still has those basic ideas behind him and not exactly what you want you know yeah. he's still got that he's still got the shit behind him the shitty i'm trying to think of the right words to say but yeah i, don't well, know I still don't trust him i don't know why they don't kick a man while, he, while he's down you know they, what, what do they have to lose you know just just you know like you're saying, Josh, go on that debate and start saying that. How are you guys supporting the, you know, if, if he's convicted, how are you guys doing that? Really, really push back because yeah. how they're doing it now, they're not gaining anything against Trump. Okay. Yeah. Right. At least they've given some PR and saying, you know, some uh, attention for doing something like that. Yeah. <clears throat> Having some balls. And do I that. Just, it, you know, it just it's just like we talked last Saturday or whatever about Christie. And I mean, and I'm not completely anti Christie. I'm just saying, but I'm not I'm not converted because I think that I don't know how genuine this is. I think that he carved out that opportunity for himself because he saw that his best path forward was to go and be the I found my religion anti Trump guy now. Mm-hmm. But I'm still telling you that I'll lay a hundred dollar bill on the table that says Trump gets elected and calls up and says Chris Christie, I'd like to make you the Attorney General of the United States of America. Chris Christie would say, I'll take it. Yep. Yeah. And, it, right. and, and to me, it's not normal politics. It's not two people running for office who talked bad about one another while they were running because that's how politics is and all that other stuff. I don't think what's happened in this case can be compared to the previous politics. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, this isn't, to me, this isn't Harris and Biden or Dan Quell and George Bush talking bad about each other while they were running for the nomination. And, you know, then one of them gets it and then they make up and they get on the ticket or serve in the administration or whatever. It's not that that was back when that is actually what it was. Yeah. Now it's something different. Right. If you ask me. Yeah. And I don't, I don't know that Christie would say, I don't think that. He <clears throat> and I, like I said last week, and then I think he would come out and he would have all these reasons why. Well, you know, if it's not me, he'll, give it, to, he'll give it to one of those lunatics and and they won't be able to they won't be able to control him. Uh, <laughs> you know, only I will. And, you know, I, I can't stand him and everything, but I'm just there to watch him. And, you know, I don't have to you know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, he would have one thing after another. And in the end, I think he takes the job. I think that's what they all do. Because, you know, that's but, what they, they want, that situation. I mean, now that, you know, no one's in the room with you, they like sucking that dick and they want to suck some more of it. Yeah, and, and, Trump, and Trump has always blasted all those guys. Ted Cruz, what he said about his wife and all that stuff. And then right when he gets in the power, then he's like, oh, he's looking for positions. And everybody starts kissing his ass. And they say, geez, you can you can say bad stuff about my wife, bad stuff about my family, bad stuff about me, and just make me, you know, embarrass me to to anything. And then then he'll say, oh, yeah, but do you want a job here? And they say, oh, yes, sir. You know, and it's not like like Josh, like you're saying, it's like, wow, Josh and I had a good fight trying to be, you know, this this position. And, you know, Josh wins out. And, hey, you know, what else can I do to support you? You know, it's not like that. It's like they're getting blasted by this guy. And then they still go back and kiss his ass and and want to do, you know, anything. But the, the stuff that Trump has said to these guys is just really you know, terrible stuff. Yeah. I mean, that's, you know, that's his MO. That's always doing. That. I mean, I, I, you know, I, I seriously, I, I mean, that's what I'm saying is if Trump were elected, you know, and wanted to make Nikki Haley secretary of state, I know she'd take it. Yeah. Why would, I mean, she said she'd vote for him. So, you know, she's going to take it. Mm-hmm. But five minutes ago, she told us, you know, that he was Looney Tunes, you know, and mm-hmm. just six months ago, she was, oh, I don't, I don't kick sideways. I kick forward. I, I don't kick sideways. I mean, they're just such jackasses. I mean, it's yeah. like, just say what you think. And and don't get me wrong. Someone could call up and say, well, that's what Christie's doing. Okay. Maybe it is. 
I mean, I will agree with you that that's what he's doing. I'm just saying, I don't know that I believe it yet. Mm -hmm. We'll see. Uh, you know, I, I mean, I, I think that it's being done because that was, that position was not yet taken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean, and he said, if I take that position, that's my best path forward. And I think, I think that's why he took it. Maybe he didn't. I have no way of knowing what's in the heart and mind of Chris Christie, right? You know, none of us do. So I I don't I don't know. I'm just saying that I don't I don't I don't think it's genuine. Mm -hmm. I mean, don't get me wrong, I, I don't know that he like loves Trump or anything, but I'm just saying that I don't know that it's that it's genuine you know i i really don't so mm -hmm. i don't know what, i mean what do you think kevin i mean do you think he's i mean you know you're you're muted by the way you're muted sorry my daughter came in <laughs> yeah yeah i remember <clears throat> i don't know uh Everyone's I, don't, I still don't trust him yet you know but i don't trust him yet, <laughs> you know yeah i mean i know what you're saying and look i don't have like a huge or really i mean i don't harbor any like ill will toward christy or you know, he actually even says some stuff, you know, that I agree with or what I'm just saying, you know, and not just on Trump. I mean, he's said some other things that, you know, OK, you know, I don't know if I'm 100 percent on that, but you know, I work with you. Right. You know, that kind of thing. So, like I said, it's not some bias of mine, you know, where oh, Chris Christie, I don't like him. So whatever. Uh, no, I just that's just my read on it is. Right. I just don't know that it's that. I, mean, I like that he's saying it. <laughs> yeah. Well, right. I mean, I like know. to listen to him and I like that he's, you know, somebody's trashing the guy and trying to wake people up. That's mm -hmm. the good part. But, you know, whether it's genuine or not, it's to be seen. Yeah. And, and to then, your and, point, maybe it doesn't even matter. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Maybe and, it doesn't, but maybe it's going to wake up the party. And that's what you need is you need, you need the party to be woken up so it gets back to normal. Yeah. And, and maybe these other yahoos in there will, will finally take a key, you know, take, take the, uh, Take the note and say, "Hey, maybe he's right," but well, I don't know. They, they don't wasn't seem. Christy, to... Wasn't Christy uh, like expecting a position after Trump got on to last time? I thought I Christy was like, know, yeah. "Yeah, but didn't he get one and then he didn't? He got, it yeah, got something weird was... like that." Yeah, uh, seem to remember something about that. Yeah, yeah, I, I think he got one and got cut loose or something. Yeah, I mean, he just. You know, or so, almost got it or something like that. Yeah, like yeah, you're right. The, so it's it's even worse, you know. But so you know, and then that that took us into as it was Wednesday. That took us into Thursday yesterday. You know, <laughs> and the the massive cloud show that you know followed up the one from Wednesday, and I mean. You know, the media, come on, you know, I mean, uh, the motorcade, the plane, uh, I don't watch that stuff because it's, it's just stupid. You know, I mean, this is this is following Tiger Woods car from the golf course that he just withdrew from, <laughs> even though he's not in the tournament anymore. You know, instead of showing the tournament, you know, not only did they Trump follow won. Giuliani and Trump. Mm -hmm. They did I mean, the same like, shit. Grow the fuck up. And then they sit there and complain about how, oh, they're doing this because he's doing this because the media is going to follow him and the media follows him. Yeah. <laughs> and they talk right. about it. I mean, well, why don't you just turn off the damn camera and play a goddamn commercial or something? You know, I, <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I, or yes, I know I beat this horse all the time, but it's like, that's why I watch C SPAN. They just turn the camera on. They don't tell you anything, you know? They just mm -hmm. let people say what they're going to say. And they cover some of that, and they do. They just put a camera outside, and they show you what's going on, and you figure it out for yourself. You know, they're not telling you anything. But, I, you know, I think I was – so it must have been Thursday morning that I'm driving to work, and they were having this discussion about what was going to happen Thursday on Morning Joe – like 6 30 in the morning or whatever and i remember the, the douchebag donnie deutsch saying i want to talk about the mug shot and and then he named all like a <laughs> serious conversation about them and i'm thinking you know i never respected that 
fucking idiot anyway. But I mean, that's like the dumbest. I don't who fucking I don't care. Yeah. I, mean, I guess I get what you're trying to say, maybe, but fucking grow up. I mean, uh, you know, you're uh, why they have that guy on there. I have not yet to ever figure out. You know, he's a marketer or whatever. Okay, well, you know, good for him, you know, but uh, I mean, you know, really, uh, they want to, you know, and he's talking about how it's going to be so historical and they, they, they should just, they should just show that mugshot in every commercial and that's all they really need to do. R really? Because, you know, like where I'm from, it, I, probably people around here would jerk off to it. So, I don't know if that's going to help. You know, I mean, maybe. I, again, I don't know. I don't live in New York City. I don't own any twelve thousand dollars suits. Maybe he's a lot smarter than I am. You mm -hmm. know. You know. I also don't. And never mind. I'm not going to make that comment about how he dresses. But you know, <laughs> you know, uh, I'm not into the whole like slip on shoes with no socks and a suit thing. But that's just me. You, you, you know. But. It's like that's what you want to talk about. I mean, I I don't I don't. Know. I mean, that's the problem with this shit is they're going to accuse Trump of making it a circus. But it's like, and I get it, but right. you're the enablers. I mean, you you're you're the you you're talking about the drunk making a fool of himself, and you're the one giving him the alcohol. Yeah, I mean, yeah. And, and that's what they're and that's what that's why I was. I said earlier, I was happy that CNN actually said, well, Trump's going to talk before he gets on his plane. If there's something newsworthy, we'll, we'll, you know, we'll replay it. And, and it's like, okay, finally you guys step up and say, we're not going to film every second of it. But you just spent like the last five hours showing him leave his house, get on the plane, land, and then get escorted there and back. You know, so, so why are you going to draw the line there? Why don't you draw the line at just cutting him off? Yeah, I mean, you know, pick it up when he arrives and goes in, and then do your yeah. thing, and then be done with. Yeah, I, right. I like I said. I mean, this is this is following Tiger Woods' car out of the golf course into the airport after he's withdrawn from the tournament for the eight hundred ninety third time in his career. You know, he, he, I mean, I don't need analysis on how he, you know, adjusts his balls or whatever in between swings. You know, I mean, like, grow up, act like you know what you're talking about act like you're a journalist for goodness sake but you know so they go into that thing on thursday and they do the coverage of that in the way that they do which we all know is stupid but that's mm -hmm. the way they do it um you know and now i've seen the stories today and last night about how he plans to market that and you know he's gonna make money off of it and you can buy a can koozie and a t-shirt t-shirt you know, yeah. all of which after the show i will be maxing out my credit cards to get you know um you know i love can koozies you know i, I get one everywhere i got the fort ticonderoga going on and you know you know all that kind of stuff so you know, I'll, I'll pick me up, you know, half a dozen or so of them and, you know, kick back and look at Trump's face every time I take a swig, you know, but it's like. I think Alan's sending it some out to everybody. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Alan will buy everybody one. <laughs> but it's just, it's just sad, really. I mean, it, it's just such a sad state of affairs that I, I find it sad i mean i don't even really know what other word to use i guess i'm trying to think of another way to describe it but i mean well, I'm... it's funny those t-shirts on it's got his mug shot that says never surrender and it's a picture of him surrendering yeah, yeah. that's that's I know. And right before beautiful you marketing on, you know before you came on i mentioned you know and you probably heard me a little bit before you know this affection that i have for winston churchill you know and uh, like as a hobby of mine, you know, I've always just, you know, a lot of stuff Churchill in my life. And, you know, that's his line, you know, <laughs> and I mean, like I said, they're words. It's not, you know, but I it just that's his thing. And I, I just taking it from someone that was genuinely, you know, uh, an ambassador of democracy, uh, you know, a defender of the Western <laughs> way of life. 
It ain't the first um, time they've done that. Well, right. You know, in Churchill, you know, literally the the leading figurehead in the in the saving of Western democracy. And on top of that, they probably didn't know they were doing that. Yeah, right. <laughs> and then using that in the way that Trump does, I mean, he has every right to. I'm just saying, it it's just sad because I don't I don't even hardly know how else to explain it. The the whole thing with Trump, honestly, is not just Trump, but the political atmosphere is just sad. I mean. And I sent you guys something earlier in the week, like my that random thought that I had where I just said, you know, like, I get it that I'm sitting here and I'm I'm streaming, you know, billions or whatever now. And Showtime keeps showing this thing for the Supreme Court documentary they've made. And I haven't seen it, but the preview seemed pretty clear that it's going to be anti Supreme Court. And I hear all these clips, all these people say, oh, yeah, there they are. They're checking off that one right-wing agenda after another after another and how, what a travesty it is and all and i get it and i like i told you guys i'm like man you know i'm just trying to sit down and think about this but like that's exactly what people said about the court in the 30s and 40s when they ran, helped run through all the new deal stuff that liberalism is based on today and you know that's exactly what people said then i mean you don't have to make documentaries about it and act like it's being, it's not like this big conspiracy. You lost and they won and now they're doing what they do when they win. The same as FDR and and the entire liberal agenda was thrust upon America, you know, uh, fairly easily. And the Supreme Court had a hell of a hand in a lot of that. And that's, that's the way it works. So get involved in the process, you know, but I mean, that's what I'm saying. The politics has just come to that now to where, like, it's always about who's out to get who and, you know, who's fucking who over. And it's, it's always they're, they're going to shove it down our throats. And I look, I get where that comes from because I sort of feel that way about some of that stuff. I mean, some of the stuff that's happened in my own state, anti-democratic, you know, sneaky ass, shady stuff. I'm just sad that we're allowing our politicians to do it. I mean, I'm not even going to really, I'm not putting that on anybody. I'm not putting that on Trump even. I mean, that, that crap started before him. I mean, don't get me wrong. He, you know, provided a, a supercharged boost for it, but I mean, the people are just letting way too much of this go. And my hope is that in order to sort of ease some of this pain that, you know, Trump goes away. I mean, uh, you know, that he doesn't get any chance at re-election, that, that Biden stays in office. Trump will obviously then be basically, you know, out. Um, and the country can continue on with a guarantee another four more years without him. But going forward, you know, that's a long time. Uh, you know, that's five or six years from now. And we can get some, you know, you know, look, there was a campaign, you know, a long time ago where the slogan was return to normalcy. You know, that was that was the, the presidential campaign slogan back then. And that's how I see it. You know, we, I mean, if I were running, that's almost I would want to be bringing that back. Like, that's what we need. We need a return to normalcy before all this garbage started happening. I mean, you know, really in the last four or five years it has just been out of control but it goes back further than that you know i mean i think we all sat here in 2014 2015 2017 you know and we were talking about how stuff had been out of hand for a while you know i mean trump just took it to another level you know but uh, it, it that to me it's just like it, it just saddens me a little bit you know i mean personally like it was the end of the Bush administration was, mm -hmm. was all whacked out and Obama got his chance. And then we all know what happened after that. Yeah. I mean, it just, you know, that's what I'm, you know, like for myself, I sit here and I think back and this was pre Trump, you know, I think about sitting here in this very chair, you know, for months and months and months at a time when I was, 
crafting a thesis for my first graduate degree, and it was on the Constitutional Convention of 1787. And all stacked up around me were all the resources, you know, I had all these papers and, you know, I had the notes on the convention from Madison and then the official notes that were taken and all the others, you know, all the primary sources were all stacked up. And I was going through this stuff every day, day after day. And I was neck deep in this debate on how to form our government and what it should look like and how it should operate and the debates that these men had. And, you know, some of them were great people. Some of them were not so great people. But some of them, who even if they weren't great people, their arguments or their stances were wise and honorable. You know, I think about that debate and, you know, what they came. And it just it just makes me sad because we've gotten so far away from it that and it's not there's many people. But, you know, Trump's the kingpin of it. I have no idea about the meaning of any of that you know it's just it's just aggravating you know it's just sad that it's 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 been torn down to that level you know it's bad yep and i think seeing the oh at least for me obama side was such that swing like wow this is really good and all this and then to be swung back the opposite way was is is a really big swing so well it's been a tumultuous decade you know mm -hmm. not the first one won't be the last. Uh, one. Makes it makes Obama's term look like oh shit! I didn't have enough time to do anything, and then all the shit hit the fan again. Yeah, it's yeah. been a tumultuous yeah. decade, and I, you know, uh, but it's not the worst, and it's not the last. I mean, I don't know how this decade. I mean, to me, in my mind, this decade is not as bad as the the '60s, for example. You know, um, but I don't know. Maybe some people who live through the '60s now say, "Oh no, no, it is. It's worse." Uh, I mean, that's it's fair. Yeah, '60s were pretty rough. Yep. Assassinations, uh, world, you know, wide scale war in Vietnam, protest, uh, I mean, uh, counterculture, uh, liberalism. Yep. I mean, you know, just, it's just crazy. You know, so I don't know. That, that's, the, that's the one thing that I, I see Alex is back, but that's the one thing that I've always, you know, with all the turmoil in, in the political atmosphere, you, you st I, I'm constantly looking around for somebody to pick somebody off. Yeah. You know, from here and here in the, you know, knowing what happened in the 60s and the 70s, I'm constantly looking around going, who's going to pick this guy off or who's going to try and pick him off? You know, it's a, it doesn't happen, but it's a terrible thought. But, you know, well, what does it say? What does it say about America that we can even get this far? Right. Right. Yeah. You know, I, that, I that, 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 that he can get this far and still be, you know, it, it's just well, that's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. That's the thing. Yeah. It just makes you wonder, uh, and I, and not get and, picked off. <laughs> I, yeah, I mean, I I just think that uh, uh, the de Republicans should be ashamed of themselves that they've even let this thing go on, you know, and that they haven't said, hey, we got to look for a better idea here. We can't allow our brand to be sullied by this criminal. Basically. Well, even in the even in the Nixon era, that's what they did. They said, what the hell's going on here? Well, you know, all I'm Pretty saying much. is that I think Biden's slogan should be: "You can either vote for the pr former, or you can all, you can either vote for the president of the United States or prisoner P O five six seven eight nine or whatever that <laughs> number is, you know, because he now has a prisoner number, yeah, mm -hmm. you know, officially. Hey, listen, I'm playing the theme here, but thank you very much, Josh, for doing this for me. I just wasn't feeling very well, and I didn't feel like a hundred percent, so I. I didn't want to try it, you know, and I knew you were coming on and you like doing this, so I thought you'd do uh -huh. it. And for all the people who didn't call him, screw you. Jeez. Actually, there's, a lot, there's a lot of different people in the chat, which is good, but they got to call up sometimes. Yeah, but also, I mean, also, uh, I mean, uh, it, the fact of the matter is, is that there are a whole bunch of people who do call this show on a regular basis, who didn't call it tonight. Shame on you. Okay? Shame on you. Anyway, hey, listen, thank you. Thank you to also to Brian and also to Kevin. It's just great having you all here, and I'm sure uh, Josh appreciates it as well. Why don't you all give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a, wave, big, a big wave goodbye at you as well. There they go, folks. That's our, our uh, citizen panel for tonight. And uh, 
Uh, I want to thank Josh for doing it for me. I didn't wasn't feeling that terribly well, and uh, uh, I just figured I needed somebody to do the show for me, and he enjoys doing it, so we'd have him do it. And the fact that some of you didn't call, well, to hell with you. Okay? Anyway, uh, I'm Alex. That's it for tonight. Uh, we'll see you again, uh, let's see here, on Monday with the uh, pop-up show. It goes out over... over uh, Facebook, and then uh, we'll be back again here on next Wednesday, hopefully. Same time, same station in life. In the meantime, as always, if you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody.